This is the first video for Chapter 1 of Medical Terminology. We are going to start with Objective 2. Objective 1 was simply um, creating an online account for the book. So we're going to start with Objective 2 in Chapter 1, which is to describe the four origins of medical language. Now, before we go on, I just want to make the point that Chapter 1 really is the most important chapter in the text because this is where you're introduced to what are called word parts. Um, things like word roots, prefixes, suffixes, and combining vowels. You'll use these rules to combine them into medical terms throughout the course. And the strategies that you use to kind of learn the additional words is going to be to analyze, build, define, and spell terms using those word parts. So this really is sort of like learning the alphabet when you're trying to learn how to read and write, learning the periodic table, when you're trying to name things in chemistry, but we have to get these basics down to be successful. Now, most of us probably realize that medicine has a language of its own. That's why you're in the class called medical terminology. There's just different vocabulary, and medical vocabulary can include terms built from Greek and Latin, Latin word parts, can have eponyms, acronyms, and terms from modern language. Many words can be translated literally to find their meaning, and if you get good at those parts and pieces, it's going to help you be successful on how to tackle some of these words in the future. Now, for the four origins, the first one, like we talked about, is Greek and Latin. So, for example, terms built from Greek and Latin words such as arthritis. Eponyms are terms derived from the name of a person, often a physician or a scientist, who was first to identify the condition. For example, Alzheimer's disease is not named after the physician or scientist that first discovered it. Um, acronyms are terms formed from the first letters of the words in a phrase and can be spoken as a whole word, usually contain a vowel. For example, laser. We've all heard the term laser. Well, laser is really light amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. A lot easier to say laser than all of those things every single time. And then we also have modern language. Modern language in contains terms that are derived from the English language, such as nuclear medicine scanner. Doesn't fall into another category, so that's where it lands. Okay, so as a review, medical term AIDS. Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome is going to be an example of a, pause here, quick quiz, should be acronym. Okay, acronym. Remember, acronyms are when you take the first letter of several words, Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome, and you get two AIDS. Okay, there you go. All right, second objective is to define two categories of medical terms. Now, the two categories of medical terms are divided into these two sections, terms that are built from word parts and terms that are not built from word parts. All right, so there are going to be a lot of words that you can tackle, use your skills and strategies and the parts that you've learned to make it easier, and then there's going to be some that you can't. And you really, if you look at this table, this table is on page 5 in your textbook, Okay, the table is categories of medical terms and learning methods. It talks about the category, talks about the origin of those words, it gives an example, and it talks about the learning strategies for you to be successful with those words. So for example, the first one, terms that are built from word parts. Well, the word parts are Greek and Latin, and you can put those together to essentially translate a word. So for example, arthritis, arth stands for joint, itis, stands for inflammation. So without even knowing the context, I can easily identify this as inflammation of a joint. So again, you have analyzing, defining, and building. Whereas if terms are not built from word parts, you can't do that. So these are going to include your eponyms, your acronyms, modern language terms, and things that just can't be translated. Things like Alzheimer's disease, MRSA, um, complete blood count and differential, and orthopedics. They just don't easily translate. And unfortunately, the way that we're going to get around this is memorizing, which is why we're going to spend a lot of time with study skills and strategies in this class. So for example, review questions. Parkinson's disease is a term that is not built from word parts. Okay, this is an example of an eponym named after the, the physician who first identified this disease. As opposed to osteoarthritis, osteoarthritis is a term that is built from word parts. And if you know the definition, we already talked about arthritis. Osteo refers to bone. Um, so you can really quickly put together the meaning of that term without going into too much depth. 